Hi everyone and welcome to NeuroPsyQ. Today we're going to be talking about the Stroop test. I'm going to be covering what the Stroop test is, what parts of the brain are involved in controlling interference, how it works, and lastly why it's so important. So what is the Stroop test? I'm going to start off with an example. So if you were given the word red written in blue ink and you were asked to name the ink color of that word, it would be tricky. You would immediately want to say red instead of the correct answer, which is blue. This concept is the Stroop effect, and this is the type of question that you would be asked in the Stroop color word test. So why does it happen? Well, reading is a process that occurs almost automatically and much faster than the process of color naming, which requires more cognitive effort. To do this task, you would have to prevent reading the word red and process the color of that word, which is blue, and this would ultimately slow down your reaction time for this task. So there is cognitive interference when the processing of a specific stimulus feature, like the color word red, impedes the simultaneous processing of another attribute of the same stimulus, such as the blue ink color. The Stroop test is used to assess the ability to inhibit this cognitive interference. So when looking at brain regions that are involved in controlling interference during the Stroop test, there are multiple locations in the brain where the Stroop effect occurs. The control occurs in a cascade-like manner, meaning the degree of control used at earlier stages of the process influence the degree of control that need to be used at later stages in the process. Evidence suggests that lateral prefrontal regions work to bias processing towards the task relevant dimension of a stimulus, such as the blue ink color from the first example, and away from the task irrelevant dimension, like the color word red. Medial prefrontal regions tend to be involved in response related and late stage aspects of control. Okay, so moving on to how the Stroop test works and what does the test actually consist of. So the most common version of the Stroop test was proposed by John Ridley Stroop in 1935. He made his participants read these three tables as fast as possible. So the two first tables represent what we call congruent conditions. Um, so in the first table, participants would have to read the names of colors that are printed just in black ink, and in the second table, they have to name color patches. The third table represents the incongruent condition. So here, participants would have to name the color of the ink of a color word, like naming the blue ink color instead of the word red that is written, which I asked you to do um, right at the beginning of the video. So in this condition, participants had to inhibit the cognitive interference that occurs from having to perform the less automated task of naming the ink color instead of the more automated task of reading the word. Stroop then calculated the number of items that were correctly named in a specific amount of time. So speed and accuracy are the typical dependent variables for this test, um, and there are many different scoring methods that have been proposed over time um, in different studies that conducted the Stroop test. So some score solely on the speed of performance, while others have measured both accuracy and speed. So the Stroop test has been digitalized over time, which has made it more accessible as it is easily automated and easily obtained over the internet. Um, the main difference is that the test used to have oral responses, and now with the digitalized Stroop test, it uses manual responses typically. Some of them can use oral responses, but many use manual responses, and these can consist of button presses or keypad presses. So the difference between oral versus manual responses has been studied, and it appears that the interference that occurs while doing the Stroop test is reduced, but is still significant um, when using manual responses in the digital test. So lastly, why does the Stroop test actually matter? Well, there are many different applications of the Stroop test. For instance, um, it can be used to assess an individual's cognitive processing speed, their attentional capacity, as well as their level of cognitive control, and some neurodevelopment disorders like schizophrenia and autism have also been studied using this test. So we've just been looking at the Stroop color and word test, but there are many different variations, such as um, the emotional Stroop test, which I'm going to show you now. So in the emotional Stroop test, participants must complete both the original test and a version where instead of color words, there are words that are either neutral, like chair, or emotional, like death. Research has shown that anxious people are likely to experience more interference with the emotionally charged words. So that was my introduction to the Stroop test. I hope you all enjoyed and thank you for watching.